Hi all, welcome to another Chess24 Pantaplets. Okay, you should see the uh, premium code um, King's Crusher here. It's uh, a vouch code for a whopping 15% off. Uh, let me see if that's... Um, yeah, my preview is working now. I was just checking my Hi preview all. as well. Welcome. Just mute that. So yes, this 15% off, you might want to check that out. Okay. Um, and you can challenge the likes of the World Chess Champion, Magnus Carlsen, other fantastic grandmasters, and there's other fantastic perks to check out. So just go to that chess24.com slash premium and this voucher code. It's, uh, that'd be great for your chess, generally. Okay. Go to the challenges. And you, I don't know what actually you might need to uh, log out and log back in. I'm not sure. I can't see a premium uh, by your name if you want to. Oh, there is actually when I hover. Oh, excellent. Th and thank you for using that vouch code as well. <laughs> okay. Okay, the first challenge today. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I'll go with uh, English opening. Why is there no 3D boards yet? Can you see a board? Sorry, uh, you can see the 2D board. On my preview, you can see a 2D. Is there a 3D board option? <laughs> I think that might confuse the heck out of me <laughs> while doing commentary. I'll investigate that. Uh, it's something to investigate. But at the moment, I, I kind of like my 2D boards uh, generally. I. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, try this to sort of get a um, bit of dynamic play here. I don't want to have my bishop crunched up in this pawn chain. Um, hoping this is a bit dynamic. If e5, uh, knight takes f5, I think. Uh, then the knights kind of undermined. So here, um, I'm hoping for c4 and for this dark square bishop to come alive. Um, so c4 and say bishop b2 and my dark square bishops come alive. I think that's sufficient compensation here for the uh, pawn because this bishop sometimes really killed. I actually had the game at the London Classic once with a uh, grandmaster, the only grandmaster I ever drew with <laughs> in a long time which was Peter Wells. He was uh, killing my bishop. I got lucky in the end and got a draw but um, he was really killing this dark square bishop. He's a real Nimza Indian guru. Uh, but um, okay so I kind of like the compensation. What do I do with that though? Is F three plausible? F three, E four, maybe. The A six move doesn't do anything for these pieces, but I'm I'm kind of unsure, of course. Um If the knight went back to F six, okay, there's something there. I can take the pawn. Uh, it goes there. That's a nice blockade square. Do I want to push through for e4? I could do this to try and push for e4. Would that actually give me any perk? Maybe it gives me a perk of um, something. Mm. If I challenge that knight there, there's knight b4. I don't like the knight on c5. I think I'll allow knight b4. Mm. Is knight b4 really tricky? So I'm currently threatening knight takes and rook takes d7, I suppose. If he plays knight b4, ah, maybe queen d2?
yeah I'm just concerned about concrete frets <laughs> they ruin otherwise fantastic plans quite often concrete flat uh, frets okay if I take an I think I will take because that's a strong line an f4 to just grip that um, uh, right Queen b1 I don't know if things have gone okay for me here or, or not. I, I've still got that nice bishop. I'm going to kick this knight back now. Can I kick this guy back? Maybe e3 just to keep the knight out of d4. If rook be out, I've got to get out of the pin bureaucracy here. Uh, Yeah. Okay, so he's attacking that pawn. Okay, queen here. Is there the possibility of rook d5? There's no knight before now that I played a3. This, if I can provoke g6, it's weakening that diagonal. So something like rook d5 would be uh, interesting. Ah, okay, rook d5 here. I think knight c4, queen c4. I would also like the idea of queen c3 and rook f5 to deflect the queen from g7. And I suppose. Alright, he's going to play that. Again, his rook takes f5 here. Isn't there? This might be better than rook d6, although I should have really considered. Uh, both. Uh, queen d2 is knight b3 to be annoying. Although there's queen takes d6 there. Maybe queen d2 is is kind of handy. And given queen d6 is, um, uh, well, it sort of backfires to rook d8 and rook d2. I suppose. Queen c7 and rook d2, it's not very nice. Okay, so, um, unless there's anything I'm missing there, uh, queen queen d1 uh, without the tempos. Well, there's queen e4 check, okay. Queen takes, all right, this is not good because of the queen e4 check, right. Okay, so yes, uh, queen f2, queen e4 check. All right, okay, big problems, big problems. Oh, I think I have to. Oh, that's terrible that I have to do that. Oh, that's terrible. Ugh. Now oh, this knight's a killer. Oh, he has killed that bishop. E4, there's rook B3 already. Oh. Um, unpleasant, to say the least. Let's try and unpin anyway against d4. I'd like him to take a pawn to get rook b1, rook b7, but I don't think he's going to take that pawn. The knight's a bit of a torture. Oh, okay. It gives me rook b1 for rook b7 if my rooks can hook up. Maybe. Um, either rookie five, okay. 
maybe I'll give you five. Well, it's still D4. Uh, after, which is unpleasant. King F4, rook takes. It's diabolical. Okay. He's slowed down for some reasons. Only 30 seconds left. I don't know why he slowed down there. Um, yes. Well, it's the best position I've had all game. <laughs> uh, the clock situation is also much more promising. <laughs> The king's actually getting improved. Oh, okay. I did run out of time. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, it was a tough game here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Gog in pool. Yeah, I was worse there. That was causing me to use a lot of time. I think I must have slowed down as well somehow. I should have maybe pre moved a bit more. In the end, okay, so King H seven, maybe Knight G four. There's a lot of difficulties, yeah. The knight on C4 was really cool. Um, anyway, back to this game. Uh, maybe E4 here. Is plausible. D5 after, okay, this looks as though the knight's in trouble. Okay, this looks a little bit speculative. Bishop h6. It's not, I can't see an immediate issue. It looks as though the queen might be trapped. Anyway, um. <clears throat> Okay, the queen looks a bit trapped. That's an interesting counter move. I think I should just leave the knight trapped, try and be modest here, and just take and then check and then rookie eight, because this is asking for a bit of issues, and I don't want to open up the opponent's uh, pieces. So I think I'll just smaller but maybe secure advantage. Just trapping this knight, I hope. Oh no, I didn't. Okay, back in the game then. <laughs> All right, it's back to that original piece set then. Okay, yeah, well, I'm not really calculating very well. Okay. Anyway, the original piece set. Well, I've got the H file, so King G7, Rook H8. Okay, I'll take this center pawn where I can. Uh, can. Uh, Rook H7, Queen H6. 
So, I'm going to take five here. This this looks interesting. Although I'm just allowing uh, Bishop E4. Does that matter? Oh no, Bishop G3 and Rook takes E4. All right, I think that's that's that Bishop. Take this Bishop. Okay, um here and then double and then rookie two. Okay, knight c five. Maybe I can just take this guy. Rookie two. Actually, I realized I could have taken the rook. I'm being, being a bit dopey here. But I could do it here in knight g3. Knight e5. Okay, this looks promising. Thanks, Goggin. Okay. Uh, Atlanta Gambit. I'll try the English opening again. And Tarasha. Huh? Actually, I'm not sure about uh, what this plays. Let's try uh, this plan. Sometimes, okay. Try and get rid of this bishop. So rook c1, bishop c5. Is sometimes an okay plan. That my e2 is suffering here. Can I just offer this bishop? Because that would cover e4 if he took. Alright, so that's quite interesting. Isn't there like taking a small sma uh, snag f3? Uh, I can't quite see it. Okay. E3, batten down the hatches, Queen F3. Oh, hang on, this knight. Well, E3 still seems okay, and then B3 after. And in fact, Queen F3, Queen F7 is dangerous anyway. But no, the knight needs to be uh, addressed. B3, let the queen go to F3. You could play Bishop G5. Yeah, Bishop G five. B three and Queen F three, but I don't want to lose E three. Okay, so Bishop G five is a pain. <laughs> it's a total pain. Yeah. Okay, this rook 
is a bit of a pain. Uh, Bishop g5. Uh, it's official. Maybe, maybe rook f3 on bishop g5. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, I think b3 or knight. Well, that's knight c3. Just if I bring the knight back on rook c4, there's bishop d4. Okay, so queen f3 to hold g3. I think knight e2 to f4 to try and hit the queen. Um, there's bishop b2, so maybe rook c2 first, knight e2, knight f4. Okay, so rook c2. I don't think there's a rook b2. It doesn't look entirely sound. I mean, maybe b4 as a prelude. Or is it necessary? Do I worry about this pawn. I think knight e2 here anyway. Um, so I'm afraid to think knight f4. Queen has got too many squares. So knight f4. Yeah, I think knight f4. Um, queen h5, knight f4. Well, there's queen f5 hitting my rook. Yes. If I play bishop d4 instead, just try and simplify. I don't want to give the f5 square to the opponent's queen. Um, I'd rather actually maybe change the plan. Knight takes and knight f5. Maybe. Mm. Or knight f4. On queen takes, there's queen f7 here anyway. So this allows knight f4 and rook c6. So queen f5 and rook c6. Okay. Hmm. Knight h3 is curious. Where does the queen go? e7, I suppose. Okay. The check pushes the king to h7. Um, knight d3 is interesting as well, but there's rook e7. Right, so something concrete here. Maybe just okay. H4 might be seen as a threat. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. On H4, there's knight h3 anyway. Uh, and why don't I just play knight h3 to start off with? Or rook c7. Rook c7 h4. Knight h3. Uh, yeah, I think that's the most promising. Rook c7. There's a sort of soft spot to pick on the f7 soft spot. h4, knight h3, and I'm sort of converging on f7. Okay, there's queen e3, queen e3, rook e3. Um, should I have allowed this? Maybe not. Okay, uh, I didn't need to allow h4, did I? Okay. I like the knight on there. Okay. Hmm. If I just unpin this h4 potentially. 
I'll just this for h3 it gives me an option of h3 on h4 doesn't it no it doesn't okay h4 hg h3 then rook h4 hmm first thing definitely not h4 h3 rook g3 so I wait for hg and then play h3 which I suppose forces rook h4 in the meantime can I take a center pawn out anyway with rook d7 to taking on d5 I think that would be the plan so h4 rook d7 I just play rook d7 here uh, so I'm trying to play for rook d5 h3 Hang on, am I falling into a trap? Hold on a sec. Rook d5, isn't there like rook takes f4? And there's no rook d8 check. I'm falling into a trap. No, e takes. Okay, hitting the queen. I, I think, <laughs> uh, okay, I think this is plausible. Because I'm hitting the queen. Right. Okay, allow that oh, annoying. Pawn pawn. Uh, in fact, can I get rid of this form pawn? Before it, before it does damage. Okay, yeah, I think just forcing technicality there on Bishop G4. Uh, English opening. <clears throat> okay. So we've had this kind of thing a few times before. <clears throat> Queen B3, and we've had this position kind of before. There's e4 here, isn't there? For queen f7. And then bishop e3 after. I mean, he could play this d... Uh, e. But if I take there, I don't think the queen's getting trapped. I play bishop e3 after. So I think I want to play bishop e3 and rook ad1. You know, on bishop h7. And I don't think there's anything in f5. Is there any point to play f5? Is there? All right. Interesting. Well, isn't the bishop hanging? Was that a miscalculation? It seems the king side shattered as well. I think there's bishop e4 at least. I don't mean there's a perpetual. That friends mate immediately. I don't think there's even a check. I can also scoop up this pawn. 
and then queen f7 win another piece Okay, knight, knight e g6 to, just picks up another piece for knight takes e7. There's still queen g6 and bishop e4 coming around here. I think this has gone wrong for black. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Queen g6. Like f five. I mean, there's also queen g seven for like f five, just to get everything off. Two pieces up. Knight f five, queen d seven. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think it was just the blunder, just laying that e four. It's queen b three is quite aggressive. Looking at f seven, thanks. It was just the blunder. Uh, okay, uh, got lucky there. I'm a lucky bunny today. <laughs> on, on that occasion, <laughs> on that occasion. Uh, <clears throat> so I play for D four. I don't want the double pawns. Um, D4 here, because I have the idea that E4 might be annoying if I don't play D4, because then he could play en passant. My pawns are not together as much, or are they? That, not entirely sure about that. Okay. Um, D5 and... Oh, that looks like weaknesses. By the way, I I saw this Karpov interview yesterday, which is at the Gibraltar, and I was completely shocked by some of the things he said. I I realised something about a lot of things. They he'd answered some questions I couldn't ask anyone about, uh, really, uh, for my chess philosophy. It started with him saying, which which shocks me, he compares his positional play to Petrosian, okay, which isn't entirely shocking, right? And what we know about Petrosian, Petrosian didn't like losing. So he said he plays like Petrosian, but to play for a win instead. And so that's kind of sneaky, I thought, that people think he's playing for a, a kind of draw. It's got all the all the aspects of playing for a draw. But he's actually playing for a win. And I thought, hang on a sec. That's quite significant because I, I, I felt he was basically saying, I think this explains why I haven't done too many of his games com compared to Kasparov. Because he doesn't mind long, bitter, grinding wins. He's going to be playing like Petrosian all the way through, minimizing the risk of a loss. And the opponent's thinking, is he playing for a draw? There's always that ambiguity. Is he playing for a draw or a win? But he's secretly always playing for a win. I just thought that was phenomenal. Because it also answered this other question I had uh, to myself for a long time about openings. How I can play the Slav and start off solidly. And then I can wreck the whole thing by flinging my pawns aggressively. I thought, well, am I just abusing a solid opening? But maybe... The thing is, you just choose the point where you're going to start. It doesn't matter how long. If you take the Karpov philosophy of what he's just said, it doesn't actually matter how long you kind of pretend as though you're playing for a draw. It really doesn't matter. So it could be at move 80, you could maybe take a risk. It doesn't matter how long you start playing for a draw. As long as the undertone, you're actually playing for a win. I, I got that from the interview anyway. I don't know if anyone else saw that interview. But basically, I, it answers this question I've, I've had that if I'm going to play a solid opening, I don't have to immediately play aggressive at move 10 or move 15 or move 20 
blah blah blah. I can keep as though I'm playing for a draw basically if I want to be a bit more in the Karpov philosophy, which also would respect the opening more. This is the point. I'd respect the solidity provided of the opening, but it doesn't have to be for playing for a draw. Um, does anyone understand what I've just said? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so because I'm always confused, should I play ever solidly? Yeah, I'm always confused uh, about playing solid openings because I'm just going to abuse them after. So anyway, um, if you see what I mean, I, I hope someone sees my point. But if you've got any questions on what I've said, I think I can try and explain it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's try and. Um, have I just lost here? Because I didn't see knight e4. I've just gone and lost, haven't I? Oh. Oh, this is just horrendous, isn't it? Do I have to play queen takes e4 now? This is just horrendous. I thought we'd be taking my knight. Okay, and there's also knight e2 check threatened as well. Oh, this is just fantastic. It gets better and better. Is there rook f2? Oh, so oh, am I going to get mated? This looks as though. This is totally diabolical, totally diabolical what I've done. So bishop f1, there is queen h1 mate. I didn't need any of this hassle. I thought I was okay earlier. I've just made it terrible, absolutely terrible. All my opponent has. e4 to try and defend f2. Bishop F3 does nothing. <laughs> it's just, it's completely crushing, isn't it? I've, I've just been crushed. Okay. Um, is there... Rook f8 and queen h8. I just lost chance at something. Probably have to take that. Maybe bishop c3. Uh, there's ways out of this. Uh, there's a lot of ways out of this. Uh, yeah, that's one of them. Yeah, so I went completely wrong, didn't I? Yeah. I went completely wrong. Well played. Let's have a quick look, actually. And so I was talking too much as well, I think. Uh, I was excited about this cop off interview, but there, there was a critical decision, uh, I think, to make, uh, which I didn't make properly. Uh, although black, yeah, I thought for a moment black had blocked in the attack. All right, hang on a sec. I've played queen c2. It, d it doesn't look very good. I thought the uh, g5 was a bit uh, dodgy, black playing g5, but maybe it's all kind of justified. I 
thought that was reasonable, but maybe F4 is better. That maybe is dodgy. Maybe F4 here, apparently. No, it still says black's better. I think <laughs> this was going that earlier in this game. When was when was I actually okay? I, I don't know if I'm actually when when am I okay here? Knight d5. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, well played. Yeah, I, 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 I just got wiped out there. Well played. <laughs> anyway, welcome to uh, Wanax, who's I just become a premium member today. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, bring on the challenges, by the way, or oh, rematches. Uh, Okay, I'm definitely beatable to that. I'm just a bit lucky there as well, but beatable, very, very beatable, as you can see. Okay, especially if I start talking about this cop off interview, I must not do that. So bishop e seven. So knight f six and or d six maybe d six knight f six castles. Can I venture knight e five here just to? Get the queen to go back to e2. I mean, maybe it's interesting. I think on f4, there's bishop g4 if I want to keep the pressure on c4 there. We'll just bring this round anyway uh, to h5. Is um is this another oh D five C five? Is that would that be good? Maybe this first. Bishop F eight C five. Bishop F eight D five. Yeah, probably it looks as though D five might be handy. Because I've got that sort of X ray on the Queen uh, D five. Go with D five. Mm, can I can I take here? Oh, if I take here, and here, was it too much? On um, Bishop E5, hang on, there's a bit of a tactic going on here. On Rook E5, isn't there Bishop F7? But I could just ignore that with King uh, H8. I don't have to take it to go into um, Knight check. Maybe I, I just ignore that then. Maybe. So Bishop F7, King H8, I assume might be okay. Um, yeah, can't rely on this pin. <laughs> um, 
All right, isn't there rookie free here? But weakness to the last move, rookie free. Okay, Queen E seven. I mean, it gives rise to Queen C five. Well, there's Bishop F three here. But thank you very much, One X, by the way, for becoming a premium member. It's really appreciated. If uh, if if any of you guys have been thinking about premium membership, that's that's really cool. Uh, if you're not already a premium member, okay. So uh, let's see. Um, if I uh, played uh, Rook uh, E1 or something, okay. Uh, Bishop takes D1. There's Rook E3. Uh, Knight e4 check this king e3 uh rook e okay so rook takes e1 how does this work well mm. how about just if i played knight g4 check unless he's really playing queen g4 that seems too much of a price to pay knight g4 check not knight e4 check because you might actually take the king uh with the king the rook so yeah i think that's better than knight e4 check i just want to get that king out of there and then i could play bishop takes d1 i mean so on king yeah, I think just bishop takes d1. Okay, so uh queen takes bishop e7. So Queen H six. All right, thanks. One X. Okay. Uh the crippled king. Okay. Let's play E four for a bit of variety. Um I'll try I'll forget the Smith Morrow for a moment. Uh let's just do uh well, I'm tempted for this this boring line. <laughs> anti Sveshnikov. I'm tempted for anti Sveshnikov. What I call anti Sveshnikov. Just take immediately some options of casting either side this system. So there's a plan of I've seen before of um, playing for F4. Which has been suppressed there. Okay, interesting. G is G three too much? So we can F five square. There's another plan for B four. Then hold on a sec. We can need some light squares. But to play G three, I just drop H three immediately. I don't think that's going to be good. Let's try and play on this side. I think one of the ideas behind this F4 plan is because you've taken the note on C6, you've kind of weakened already E5, so piling on the pressure on E5 is often in interesting. Uh, now if I take yeah B5, that is true. Is it plausible D4, D5 though? In this position, so b5 d4. I don't think it runs into a tactic. I've got e2 covered. 
So D4, say castles D5 uh, would be threatening D6. Uh, I think that's what I'm looking forward to here on black castling. Yeah, D4, D5. Sorry, on B5, D4. On ED, Bishop D4. Bishop D4, Queen D4. There's no Knight E2. So what does he do on d4? Maybe he wants to get rid of that bishop anyway, or doesn't mind. Well, I mean there might be in that case e5 and knight e4 and knight f6. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Yes, that's different, isn't it? The rook d eights and stuff. That's very different. All right, can I just take this pawn then and try and keep this diagonal solid? I don't think d four. This is a different, very different. Try and keep the diagonal solid. Maybe a four. Fix the pawn and then pile on the b six pawn. If I can cause c five to happen, the knight d five later. There's a bit of a trade off there actually of bishop f4 opening up this bishop for knight d5. Oh, here, um, is there a hack attack of some sort with knight h3? I think I've always got f3 at the moment, so I'm going to nick this pawn, I believe. All right, I'm not sure about this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call the bluff. I think it's a bluff. There's no queen f3. Bishop g4 f3. I'm calling the bluff here. I think it's a bluff. Anyway, I, Bishop g4 f3 opens up that second rank defense. Um, Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so queen queen g4 here. I mean queen g2 here. Right. And bishop c5, just to get that rook off the yeah, foul when he's an exchange off. Maybe it's it's better to just exchange off uh, some rooks. There's a5 just to hold that pawn. And then I can play rook g1 looking at g4. Okay, so knight e2 here, g3, knight e2. And well, I think this is possible, entirely possible, because no, that's not, that's out of the question. Okay, what about knight g3 to f5 actually? Knight g3 to f5 would wait, make way for queen g4. So just interrupt this bishop. Knight g3 to f5. If bishop c3, probably rook f1. All right, so I can go in to interrupt this um, bishop on on the knight f five. Oh, there's a tactic almost knight f three. No, it's not working on h five. It's not working because the bishop's protecting the queen. There's queen g four here though. Bishop h two, queen g five.
All right, thanks for the game. Thanks for the game. All right, yeah, it's interesting. Um, Friedel. Well, I'll be fried by Friedel today. Okay. Uh, are we playing? Uh, what are we playing here? Mm. Um, I'll invite a French defense. Okay, so we've got this advanced variation, which has this cute uh, Max Erwa uh, waiting move. Oh, that's interesting. F4 there. This seems mostly harmless. I think Knight H6 to F5. I know I, I like this uh, position uh, so far. I think I can just take on d4. Can I not? Is there some trap? Any um, taking an bishop e3, there's knight c2 check, queen c2, queen e3. So knight takes, knight takes, knight takes, bishop e3, there's knight c2 check. So as long as there's no queen a4 check, I think I can safely take this pawn. I want to like expose this rook as well. This looks gone wrong to me. This looks very gone wrong, this position. Uh, it's queen g1, but there's bishop b5 check after. I'm going to be worried about bishop g5. Even so, this this position here looks interesting. If I don't fall into that trap, it looks as though I, I, I just castle maybe. And I'm looking at that rook. Um, yeah, I think I think I'll just uh, castle. Okay, so Bishop D seven looks. Uh, or G6, maybe G6. All right, there might be some issues here then. Okay, with G4 and stuff. Oh, and I got into an attack then, after all. Hmm. Okay, king's on c2, that must mean something. Bishop d7, take rook c8, threatening bishop a4 sometimes, b3. Okay, it looks, it looks dangerous for the white king as well, as well as my king. So I think I'm threatening immediately bishop a4. <clears throat> if I take this bishop a4 for queen d3 potentially so bishop c3 I don't know if that's best uh, it gives me bishop a4 which is annoying surely or just taking on c3 um, if he does hg rook d3 g takes king e7 I think my king's going to escape so I think I'm just going to do this for a moment. Do I need bishop a4 or not? Um, where does that? So f5, queen h5 is a bit of an issue. The queen can't go over there because of queen d3 mating, actually. 
So in other words, I can play f5 and not worry about queen h5 right now. Why don't I just play f5? There's no, there's no queen h5 right now. So there still remains an idea of mm, bishop a4 if needed. Well, here that closes the h5 square. I want a bishop d2 here for rook c1, uh, using that extra piece like that. Just I'm interrupting the queen from the bishop as well. Bishop c2, um, I could worry about that. Or I could just play bishop d2. I think bishop d2 overall looks like a convincing move. Okay, I'm down to a minute though. In fact, rook, I'm taking on g1 still on uh, rook c2. Is he playing actually king c2? No, no, no I, th I think that's too much. That king c2 is too much. Bishop a4, b3, queen c3, yeah. I, I think here, um, bishop a4, I have here, queen c3, and, well, it's all good there. I, I think it's all good, yeah. I thought for a moment I'm getting crushed here on the king side. Uh, thanks. Um, I'll try this uh, for fun, just for fun. This Budapest, I've got a book somewhere on this um, Budapest Gambit. Oh, <laughs> okay. I was going to say about this third rank thing, but anyway, uh, it's in this. It's one of the reasons I think to play the Budapest to clear your third rank and play a five, rook a six is a bit of fun, but sideline now <laughs> of this game. Okay. Um okay so uh yeah I'm I'm just going to cancel I think maybe that's too sane maybe I should have done something else <laughs> castling seems plausible here <laughs> okay it looks like a bit of a tango, I can tango over here this night. The Scent of a Woman, classic film. If you haven't seen it, must see film, yeah. He mentions about the tango. If you if you if you mess up you just tango on. Scent of a woman, uh, brilliant. Uh okay. Knight G six H six I like calling it Tango. It's actually got this weird Kevin Farowitz name to it. I don't know. I can't remember the name. I like calling it the Queen's Knight Tango um, when I play Knight C6 to E7 to G6. So I'm playing it here anyway. And it's a, it's a familiar pawn structure. Pawns on light squares. The bishop's quite good in this structure on that diagonal. Um, probably the f4 square is going to be handy for me. Uh, White's playing a kind of slow queenside attack, quite sophisticated, really. Should I be worried? Uh, my crew, my crew play has been questioned by this sophisticated positional queenside play here. Gaining space and uh, uh huh, okay. And if I just play knight g4, Thank you. 
I don't know if any of you are into Audible. I've got news this week about Audible. I joined Audible and it's actually quite good. I, I got Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy as my first Audible. Uh, it's quite entertaining. Uh, okay, so... Uh, Yeah, yeah, that that would be dangerous. That I assume is is pretty dangerous. I I like doing this peace sack anyway. Uh, Any time control, quite often it's dangerous as well in this position because that bishop's pinning that pawn. So there's like g three and uh, queen h four sometimes. So uh, G3 and uh, Queen H4 plan. Hmm. Okay, so uh, say say Knight H2, uh, G3, Knight G4, let's say. Bishop G4, Bishop G4. There's Queen H four there, which could be good. Ah. Okay. Giving I'll oh I'm tempted. Do I take the piece back? It's tempting just to take this get this piece back. And then maybe G four, G three anyway, King G seven, rook H eight, that's kind of thing. So G four, King G seven, rook H eight. Is trying to close up the bishop though? All right, I'll let the bishop out and about. Oh, with tempo, I can go to um, e5. Yeah, okay, okay. Knight e2, bishop e5. Uh, B takes is threatening, a takes. Okay, I'll put I'll plonk it here. Still got g4 as an idea. Uh, and this looks dangerous generally. Uh, G4 first though looks dangerous. All right, thanks. Uh, yeah, interesting. Okay. Talk with Dita. So we've got a three minute game here. I'll try a French defence. That worked out well earlier. Don't mind the advanced variation so much. This F6 I find gives black potentially really active pieces or getting that nasty looking centre. This nasty looking F file as well. Uh, so H6 and Queen F6. Maybe just Knight uh, H5 here. For Knight F4. This nasty looking F4 square. Uh, so Queen, okay. Uh, G takes is a nice G file. So I can imagine. Uh, using this G file uh, pretty soon. If I play rook f7, uh, switch the other rook to g8, or both rooks on g7 and g8 uh, would be, um, okay, I'll take it here. And in fact, can I grab another pawn? I'm greedy here. So e5. Drop the queen back. Is there any dynamic counter uh, potential here? Okay, there is. 
Okay, as this knight f5. Okay, I'll try and do something about knight f5. Just allow knight g6 instead. Lesser evil entry, I think. Oh, or just sack the exchange here. Save a lot of hassle. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna drop back. Okay, maybe rookie. I've got to be careful of knight h6. Maybe rook e7. Or rook f7. Okay, hold on a sec. Hell on. <laughs> knight f6 all of a sudden is, is pretty dangerous. Um. Is Bishop F eight, Knight F six, or play Rook F seven? If I play Rook F seven, Queen E six. Oh, so I play this. Can they get cozier? I think this Knight's causing me concern. Not quite here though. It was causing a lot of concern just then. I'll just kick this guy back for a moment. And stop it going to F3 as well. I think I really just want to play D3 and Knight D4. So D3 and Knight D4. I'll get the Queens off. Before I lose all these other pawns, I can take that. That helps. Yeah, I think these pawns are super dangerous now. Okay, let's check. Hmm. H four rook f two. Thanks. Yeah, I think it's too dangerous there. Uh oh. Any any rematches uh, welcome? Any rematches? Or any, any challenges? Even challenged before, just uh, bring it on. Got a few minutes uh, to go. If you want to challenge, you want to rematch, we'll give it a go. Uh, why? Okay. Kremlin student. Okay. Can I try a French defense against Kremlin student? It's a free minute. I see six. Yeah, you know, I should just button down the hatches here. As long as the h5 square isn't uh, useful, I should be okay. I hope with rook g7. Oh, well, that's a bit passive. Knight f8. Is, there, is queen g5 actually on? Knight six, queen g3. Queen g5 might actually be uh, plausible. And it was. Not now. Um, okay, it's a bit passive, I guess. Bishop d7, queen e7. This looks 
Can I do something about this guy before it's dangerous, super dangerous? Maybe there's a counterattack against G5. Knight G5. Right. Okay. No, it's still looking very passive. I can get this rook over here though. I'll try and contest that H file. Try and stop this being a past pawn. This uh, G5 being a past pawn. Did I just drop a pawn? Oh no. Um. Knight a5 to b3, is that dangerous? Knight a5 to b3, it's like the king's a little bit unsafe, the white king potentially, surprisingly, given the earlier action center of the board. Um, but yeah, knight a5 looks something I should be very interested in. Um, uh, queen f7 to start off with. So knight a5. Um, there's always king c2. What if I try and made that better with rook h2 for knight b3 to be almost mating? Rook h2 is plausible. In the meantime, any bishop f5 taking, I can play knight b3 as a safety for king c2, queen g6. Ah, hmm, knight b3 taking queen b3. That's interesting. Where is it? There's just king c1 after. Ah, okay, so is this h file super dangerous? Hmm. Is there bishop d5 here? Hold on a sec. No, there isn't. Okay. Uh, b5. I'm too passive here. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, I'm down on the clock and everything. I can blockade there. Maybe knight be free taking out this guy. F four. We'll just take this guy. D4, Queen E6. With Queen E5. D3. Oh, hang on. I think there was Bishop B3. I think he might have missed bishop b3 just then, it's in that moment. Uh, I dare not look at it. I don't, I don't want to look at it, particularly if there's bishop b3. I, I think queen b5, queen, yes, bishop b3 in that moment. This diagonal of death causes a lot of death, basically, yeah. Uh, okay. It's only a few seconds. It's that bullet after that, isn't it? It's only, it's only okay. Any other challenges today? Uh, or could look at um, earlier in this. If you want to challenge, there's time for one more challenge. Any rematch? Anyone for a rematch? Um, just looking at 
the opening there though was pretty dodgy. Oh, there's a channel. Okay. And there's a rematch. Yeah. Okay, I'll play English opening. I think he's sussed my uh, Smith Mora uh, quite significantly. I'm a bit worried about my Smith Mora <laughs> getting nothing out of the opening at uh, that time. Uh, so I wonder more positional openings against Kramnik students. Hmm. So Bishop G five or H three, I think H three actually. And then like this. Bishop E three. Queen D two. I think there is a perk of this position. Knight f4 to d5 is a is a nice perk of this position to have a, a knight on d5 in this particular structure. A knight on d5 looks a bit juicy. Um, still put it there. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't want to get rid of all the tension in the position. Um, that queen c6 is annoying as well. So c5 then. Try and blunt that bishop. Um, On a7. Queen c6 here, there's d5. Hmm. Yes, that is a pawn. That is a pawn. But the bishop for the moment is hemmed in. Knight d5 coming up. Hmm, so knight d5. I don't really want to help that bishop. Is there knight c7? Right. So uh, rook d7 maybe. I'll just him in this bishop uh, hits it. And this is anything stronger. Knight d5 actually threatens knight e7 as well as the bishop. I think that's stronger. Although, I mean, there is c4 check. No, king king g two. Okay, so knight e seven check. Ah, okay. Thanks, Kramik student. Uh, and one last one. What is it? it depends how. Okay. So knight f6 and bishop c5. Oh, e5 and d6 then. This structure. Knight f6 and bishop e7. Okay, that means knight f4 is plausible. Uh, this means rook f6 and rook g6 is plausible. All right, that means knight h3. Maybe queen f8. 
defending rook f2. Okay, there is bishop g4. Maybe knight f2, because rook f2, um, uh, there's king h3 after. I think maybe knight f2 actually. Ah, oh, that's intriguing. Okay, so queen f6. Friends, queen h6. That's awkward, I think. Any knight move, I can just snap it off. Knight c4, right. Okay, so here... Uh, h6 for a moment stop bishop g5 or not doesn't need to if I just travel um, or g6 and um, for h5 maybe uh, I'll go with that so h5 gives me queen e6 actually kicking the queen off if queen d7, uh, rook d8, queen c7, okay. So queen e6 looks devastating. Yeah, let's, let's take the queen. Okay. All right. Uh, Okay, um, and definitely last game, definitely last game. Okay, Morphe forever. <clears throat> right, so I'll go with this sort of main line thing. I usually h6 is played, and after h5, the bishop usually tucks away. So the key difference here, this g5 square, I can use the g5 square maybe a bit more than than usual. Maybe just straight off the bat. Maybe queen b3 straight off the bat is hitting f7, b7. <clears throat> okay, so um, let's see. Uh, bishop d two. Mm, yeah, it's annoying. B three then. If I console here. I think there's knight h5 on black castling. Because uh, if knight takes queen h7, so if black castles knight takes h5, uh, if casting over here, may maybe it's a little bit unsafe. Okay, I, I think knight h5, just check it again. Um, Still plow on with uh, plow on with uh, h5 or not? There's knight takes h5 hitting uh, the knight. Maybe that's not good. Knight e6 here for queen g6. Um, is mildly interesting. Well, when I say mildly. I mean, I can't resist it when I say mildly interesting. I mean, it's irresistible. I'm going to play it, whatever happens. <laughs> Tal just gives up a lot of games. Uh, he gives up a knight of two pawns. Yes, Tal. Mikhail Tal influence. Okay. 
it's it's only a night. Uh, not worry too much. So C3 and uh, plow from there. There's a nice pivot square on E5. So uh, okay. Take another pawn. Uh, maybe not immediately with the queen. I think I want to bring in some some reinforcements here. Can I take on e6 here, or just keep that pin with queen h5? Okay, I'll take this other pawn. I think it's a few pawns for the piece. Uh, It's it's actually it's actually not that convincing, is it? Uh at the moment. Knight uh, H five I'll be prepared to give up the Queen for two rooks. I believe on rookie eight. Oh, I'll put my money where the mouth is. Okay. So if I go to e seven here, the bishop hasn't got too many squares. Okay, rookie seven looks as though it's picking up a piece to knight G, with knight g seven. So knight g seven gives rise to knight f five. Yeah, knight f five is very tempting. Uh, hmm. Okay, so rook g seven uh, looks as though I'm an exchange up. Uh, might as well cash out, I believe. Yeah. Exchange out. Take out this pawn. I'm getting a collection of pawns throughout this game. Uh, pawn hunting this game. Uh, all right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Have a good rest of Sunday and um, see you next week. Thanks so much. Cheers then. Oh, remember to check out, by the way, the premium uh, thing, Voucher Co. King's Crusher. Well worth it. Thanks so much.